G, whoops, tell us if you can see us. GM Farcaster. It is Friday, October 25th. And you are here with Nounish Prop and Adrian for 29 minutes of Farcaster News to start your day and a celebration of purple. We are very purpley today. This is very exciting. Happy birthday, purple. Happy birthday, purple. It is um the second birthday of purple, which launched two years ago. And we're going to have Chris Corella on in just a few minutes to sort of give us a rundown of these past two years and celebrate purple and also talk a little bit about scout game and learn a little bit about that. Uh, but before we do that, we've got a few things to jump into. Um, not too much, but Adrian, you picked up another token. Very exciting. Um, I did. In Only my second. And I forgot to check and see if I won the 671. I'm not sure. I forgot to check. Oh, no. I might have been outbid. I often forget. Uh, but I did put a bid on the on 671. So I got to go check that out. Um, so today's a good day to bid on purple is what is what we're was what we're saying. And we'll talk more about what exactly purple is in just a little bit. Uh, but a few news things that happened yesterday. Anybody notice that DWR left? I'm sending a message to Adrian at like, I don't know what time, right before I was get, doing something yesterday and I was like, is did DWR block me? Can you see if you can find him? Because <laughs> I can't find him anymore. And then it turned out uh, he's, I don't know, lost his username somehow. I don't know, didn't have the recovery phrase or something happened there. And he's now just uh, exclamation point three, which three is his FID. And we still don't have any information as to why this happened. He said it was a bug. Okay. And, and he gave no further information. Okay. Um, I did love this. Uh, PFISTA and TLDR with the um, one and two sitting in a tree. D-E-C-E-N-T <laughs> realizing decentralizing uh first comes hubs then comes channels then comes decentralization of private messaging for the protocol at large including apps not named warcast i just thought that was hilarious um it was very cute so well done uh there but i was so confused i'm like what is going on am i blocked what did i do too many too many political I don't discussions. Know. speaking of sitting sitting in a tree my my questions are is that global? Does everyone around the world know what that means? And number two, are people well, still saying it? I never once heard my kids say it. So I feel like it may just true. be some weird thing that old people. only yeah. old people of a certain time know what that means. That could very well be true. So for the youngins, if you have no idea what we're talking about, this was like a fun little, I don't know, teasing phrase that you would sing um, to make fun of your friends when they had crushes. Yeah. So they probably don't do that anymore because they're more evolved than we are. Um, this from Varun, Warpcast experiment, trending feed. We're going to run a few experiments to improve the trending feed, make it easier for new accounts to get into the trending feed, inject trending casts into the home feed to help discovery. About 50% of users will see the new experiment for a few, few days. Please send feedback. And here's the important point. If you're in the experiment, you won't be able to open the trending feed anymore and the casts will be mixed into your home feed instead. And I begged to be not, in the, I want to be in the control group. Please do not put me in this experiment. I don't want to lose my trending feed. And do you Please. still have your trending feed? I are you in the experiment? Trending feed. I am not in the experiment. So if you are in the experiment, go add your comments here. Um, because yeah, they want to know. If Yeah. And if you're in the experiment and your trending feed went away and it's only mixed in your home feed, Prof will give you $5 if you <laughs> tell V that you hate it. Please tell V that you hate it. I appreciate that. Um, this from Horse Facts. Mini app transactions are live. Request transactions from your composer actions and mini apps live on Warpcast web and mobile. Check for an app update and reload Warpcast. And there's information about the details here. So that's exciting for mini apps. I wonder if that's how um, we were able to get the new life in uh, trivia the other day. So they added a little thing that if you had the alpha pass, 
you got to revive yourself. And essentially it's a transaction within the, within the middle, little mini app. So it might be related to this, but it was uh, a lot of fun. Also still loving trivia. You guys should all go do it. Um, couple of things from Moxie. Yeah. It's been um, a bit of a couple of days. We're not going to breathe any oxygen into the full on controversy, but I will mention this. Uh, this was from beta shop. We're thrilled to announce finalists for the Moxie retro one grants. 214 applications are submitted. Rigorous review process, Moxie expert councils consisting of 32 peer nominated forecasters, 107 projects earned grants, 29 finalists were chosen. And now there's a DAO voting for um, the larger grants. So lots of folks got some grants for doing cool things with Moxie. Uh, you can see them here. And then there was a little bit of a dust up. And this, oops, this came from um, Beta Shop after that, just kind of discussing what happened there and the resulting um, decision for somebody who was being a little bit toxic to step away. Uh, so I'm, that's, I'm just going to sum it up like that. <laughs> just leave it there. And like, please, like, let's not do this again. Let's just stay away from this kind of stuff. It felt very crypto twittery the past few days and I wasn't enjoying it at all. So maybe we can, we can move on. Um, helpful more. Great, great summary prof. <laughs> We're just going to leave it there. Uh, one other, like not happy to happy a thing. And then, uh, we're going to move on from this, this part is that, okay. So a couple days ago, there was a tweet that said from the, uh, crypto Twitter influencer who does, um, coffee with the captain. So remember Farcaster, they raised 180 million, including 150 million in May 24 with a billion dollar valuation. On July 1st, Farcaster hit 2 million in cumulative protocol revenue. About four months later, cumulative revenue is only up, is only 2.34 million. It has become nearly non-existent for Dune. And it kind of goes on to like drop some data in there saying they're not earning revenue. Uh, so therefore it's dead. <laughs> it's dead over here. Um, I liked P Pista's uh, comment here is just this, uh, if you can see it, this is pointless. This is the growth chart of every business ever. <laughs> and we are here. <laughs> so, um, and then in the, I'm sorry, but yeah, oh, actually you can read what Eric wrote because I think he summed it up nicely, but it was one of the dumber things I've, I read and yeah. I just yeah. because it's kind of like it just completely misses the point. And the fact that we're here in Farcaster and kind of no one, no one's talking about protocol revenue as any metric no. that is meaningful. I mean, it's a proxy for new people who are joining. That's the only way protocol gets revenue. And we're not surprised. We, we've we seen a dip in signups, but it right. doesn't really change the thesis for what Farcaster is building. Um, but number two, it's like that good reminder of like when you're in somewhere – and you're seeing people who are building and you're seeing it, what the outside thinks, it's like, it's irrelevant. And yeah. it, it just, I don't know. You can read what Eric said because I thought it was very good. Yeah. Let me read this from Eric's uh, GMRGS. I can't, can't believe this defiant headline and article, LOL, wrote down some thoughts. And this is in relation to um, the captain and related related media. The narratives are going to continue to look more disconnected from what's actually happening on chain. This is already the case when we look around at many, not all, legacy crypto media brands. Reality is many of these brands have incentive for social to stay the way it is, where they've built audience and influence and earn significantly from it. How many do we see here actively? Few. As we all know, legacy media relies on broadcasting to earn ad revenue, but FC is different. Media on FC is driven by permissionlessness, permissionless community participation and free market incentives for all, not just the brand. Just as Twitter continues to be a threat to legacy media because of how it decentralizes the news flow, Farcaster is doing the same, but on another level. And it starts with crypto because that's what's often discussed here. Continue below. 
FC is about individuals first, based on the premise of ownership and alignment of incentives in community versus extraction of community. Probably the reason we don't see many of these brands here, even when this app can do more on chain than all other social apps combined. We can definitely be patient, and I guess some will continue to come around, but as mentioned at the beginning, wouldn't be surprised to see the narratives of legacy crypto media get further and further away from what's actually happening, which will give opportunity to the new people building on media on FC today. Now let's have ourselves a Friday. <laughs> so happy Friday. Perfect. Hey, do you know anyone building happy media on Farcaster? I, I don't. I don't. Uh, oh, yes, actually, we are. That's right. Um, it's uh, it was interesting. It, it was like I, I jumped into the Twitter, the Twitter space that went with this. And the title to the Twitter space was Farcaster, all capital letters, and Foundation Fail. Um, and it's like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, you can't have this headline for like another 10 years. <laughs> like, then we'll talk. But it was uh, it, it was really interesting because what I got from that space was that they didn't believe that headline at all it was it was clickbait so right. we shouldn't get to you know, and it worked and it worked because you spent some time in there really well so it worked very very well so let's uh let's not <laughs> give them that anymore um but yeah it was uh it was it was a, it was something um okay a couple more quick things and then we're going to bring chris up uh this is um the other thing that was been, I was spending a lot of time seeing on my timeline yesterday was this. Uh, it started with Miriam. So it started with Miriam. Uh, when I'm mad, okay, hang, anger. Okay, anger. And then it went from there. Um, so Adrian picked up on it at the same time as Tony Hawk. Uh, when my friend with the private jet asked me if I want to meet up. Okay, hanger. <laughs> and then Tony's mad at you because you ruined the chain. Because he started one over here. We see first. <laughs> I don't know. We, I didn't do the analysis. When I'm frustrated with Chat GPT, okay, clanger. <laughs> so it, yeah. Uh, I think you literally both did it at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, maybe you were, he might actually he might have been slightly before you. Uh, All right. Sorry, you're breaking him. up. Let's let's edit uh, sorry. that out. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> when it's Halloween and Dracula steals your can candy, okay, fanger. Uh, when Adrian doesn't like your rhyme, okay, danger. <laughs> and That's, this is what, rhyme. and this is when it started to devolve <laughs> because there was a ranger one. I think that was horse facts. If you try to tell me ranger rhymes with banger, I'm going to spam Uli channel with dolphin speak. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> And this was Kristen's response surfacing unhitched Adrian. Uh, but Tony felt the same. He was a little disturbed. I just read through that entire OK Banger meme quote cast thread. And to be honest, y'all worry me. <laughs> if you apparently don't know how to rhyme, Adrian, we might need to stage an intervention. Um, so that was funny. And at the end of all this, uh, so what um, Miriam <laughs> at one point had said, uh, do what you said, is this a new f meme format? Oh my God, nah, that would go to my head. And then I said, has it got to your head yet? My whole feed is this. And she said, this is seriously the best day of my life. <laughs> so that's the story on that. And wasn't it hilarious? <laughs> so I enjoyed that tremendously. Um, um yeah, uh, it was so funny. Go, just SB go back to Miriam's and, and you'll see. Wider, because we now we don't really know and can pronounce that. We still that. don't know how to um, say your name. Yeah. <laughs> Missed the whole thing. That's that's what we got you. That's why you that's come to here for Pastor, so we can tell you the memes you've missed. That's is the whole point of the show. <laughs> that's there it is <laughs> to go through memes like that. Uh, I started I a meme, but I'm not going to let it change me. <laughs> Honestly, right? Like, how much right. better does it feel? To start a meme, then get five USDC, and then and then we were tipping her anyway. So there you go; mm -hmm. it all works out. I wonder if she'll get five USDC for the. Uh, a lot of times, the original meme doesn't doesn't mm. do as well as subsequent ones. That's true. 
All right, let's bring uh, our friend Chris Carella up here. Hello, Chris Carella. How are you today? Happy Hello, Thursday. pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Park Esther. So it is Purple's birthday today, two years old. And um, for those who might be new and have no idea what Purple is, can you share a little bit about what Purple is? Yeah. So Purple is a DAO um, fashioned after nouns and using um, the Builder DAO software. So Purple is a nounish DAO, uh, where our goal is to help proliferate and expand the forecasting protocol and ecosystem. And if you, I mean, if you watch this show, I'm almost certain you know what a nounish DAO is, but we have a daily auction. Uh, in fact, Prof, you are still the high bid on 671. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> which is a, which is be beautiful artwork. I love the white ones. Um, there's six hours left, so someone outbid Prof, please. Um, but we have a that's a great mug. We um, we have a daily auction. 100% of the proceeds from that auction go into our treasury. Um, the treasury can only be unlocked with proposals. Uh, so it's not like there's a multi sig or anyone has control of this treasury. It is truly. Um, a down its purest sense. And so people can put up proposals, um, uh, you know, to expand and proliferate and, and support the Farcaster ecosystem. And then the membership votes. And if it's a yes vote, uh, those initiatives get funded to, to do what they promised they were going to do. So I think that's kind of the technicality and the technical, what, what is purple? Purple is a DAO that supports Farcaster. Uh, we've been around now for two years. Uh, in the early days, I, I should like look this up when we launched purple how many users were in farcast there were probably like a thousand of us you know it was yeah. like a very very small yeah. uh, there was no moxie there was no dgen uh there was no venture capital in the ecosystem uh and so purple wound up being the way we bootstrapped a lot of the projects in the ecosystem it was at one point the only funding source and um you know when i had sort of uh uh you know, I never like want to take credit for this because it truly was like the early forecast users or probably, you know, a hundred of us in a, in a telegram talking about this at the time. But when we fashioned it, it was like there were a lot of developers, people like Greg and Zach, and like they were just doing cool stuff in forecast. It like made no sense. There were no users there, uh, but they were spending their nights and weekends building really cool apps, surfcaster, all this cool stuff. Um, and so you know i just wanted to to fund those people for their efforts and and then and then ultimately encourage it so that's kind of where we started and and the heart of what we're doing here that's the best summary that was fantastic and um one of the big things too that purple has done is retro rounds um and they've done that for basically the past year like every few months um have done retro uh, grant round for anyone uh, who is building on Farcaster. It started on Prop House and it would be like the top five would get one ETH. And now it moved to rounds right on in the purple channel. And now 107, I think, in the last round ended up with some funding, which is amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I don't know what to make of this experiment. We did rounds twice. Um, you know, in the early days, I mean, you just described it well. Very early on, it was one ETH to five. It would be five ETH rounds are typically what we've right. done. So very right. early on, it was one ETH to five winners, which is like, that's some working capital. You know, that's a, that's a real reward. I would say, like, also a lot of software developers were winning one ETH in the early yeah. days, and it's a little bit less meaningful for them than some others. Um, but, you know, we did five ETH. Then we wanted to have a bigger. So then we had 13 winners. And it was like the first one won one ETH and then second and third place won 0.5 oh, ETH. Right. And, then, and then a cast gave it down. And now it's like a lot of people, like with the number you just said, over 100 people get a small amount of ETH. Um, and so, you know, if you think about it just from a grants funding perspective, uh, I wonder how people feel if, if that's like the best use of capital. Now, what lots of people have told me, I think even you guys, is often it's like not about the amount of money. Again, at, at max, we were giving yeah. one ETH away. Uh, a lot of it is just like the recognition of your peers. And you know, so many people have told me like, hey, this was the thing I needed to keep going. Uh, exactly. One of them, which I think is, is another like fantastic success story, is um, HeroCast uh, yeah. was... Um, 
you know, they were, it was a project running on fumes and then they got a purple grant and he straight up told me like, this is the validation I needed to keep working on this thing. And then other grants from other ecosystems came in and they won an OP grant and now they have a paid product. Uh, so it really has kind of kickstarted uh, awesome. a lot of projects that we all know about today uh, that, you know, maybe it's been some history. So we don't know about purple as much. Right. And, and I think that's, um, you know, so if you were just new to this, you, you're not familiar with purple. Um, it, it's a really has been a really helpful thing within this ecosystem to keep people going who are building on things. Cause most of the time, most people are starting this as, you know, it's the weekends and nights kind of thing and you're doing it on the side and to have some recognition that like, yes, this is valuable. Um, and people are using it is big. You know, and it's it's been really helpful to us. It was our first revenue, and it was like, okay, this is this feels good to be able to 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 drive something and and be recognized for what we're doing. So, um, yeah, I think the maybe a combination of the two, Chris, might be better. Like where maybe the first top three get a little extra bump or something like that, or something. I don't know or have an opportunity to submit a prop or I don't know, with some, some kind yeah, of additional one. recognition. And that's what we did with builder with um, when we used rounds, we had a very small amount going to whoever was proposing. And then the larger amount went to the Dow into their that's treasury. Really so a little different. So maybe some combo, but I do think it's great that more people can get some recognition for what cool. they're working on. And also the rounds help sort of, um, amplify what people are working on as well. So that gives more eyes on it more and that awesome. helps us helps too. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. I would love to give some of my thoughts on purple here on our two year anniversary, um, which is it's been a wild year for Farcaster. Um, yeah. It's like frames seem like it was like in a different era, but that was this year. Um, it, was this year. it was not right. even a year ago. Yeah. Right. Crazy. Adrian, you look like you want to say something. I'm just so, um, you know, we just launched our Farcaster 101 like educational series. And we just, when we filmed um, our episode on frames this week, when we when we first talked about them, Prof said, you know, they, that they launched in January 2023. And I was, I didn't even edit that out because it cracked me up so much. It <laughs> feels so like it forever wrong. ago. It's like yeah. less than a year. Yeah. Like I mean, even crazy. like, I'm like, uh, yeah. I woke up today. I told my wife, like, "Hey, it's the it's Purple's two year anniversary." But like to do the math, it's like it's only been two years because yes, you know. At first, I was like, "This is our three year anniversary." Oh wait, no, that was now. It's like this is our two year yeah. anniversary. You know, yeah. <laughs> crazy. But I think you know it's been a wild year in Farcaster. Um, I, I've enjoyed it. I mean, I think all all good things, you know, up only. Uh, Frames is really amazing and brought in a lot of builder energy. A lot of that didn't stay, um, you know, when, you know, I guess I maybe have personal theories, but when the gold rush wasn't there, people, people left. Um, but we did bring in like a lot of builder energy and then DGEN brought in a whole other series of energy. And then we had higher and, you know, that, that whole season of meme coins. And then, um, uh, Moxie more recently, I mean, there's just like so much going on. And then, like I would say like before frames purple was still the only funding source in the ecosystem. Yeah. And so we played like this outsized role um, in being able to fund people and support people. And then, um, you know, frames happened and all the people came in and now a lot of the, and like, this is a positive thing. A lot of the companies are getting funded uh, through venture. In fact, some of like, I think Ponder's first capital was, um, was through Purple, and then now they got venture funding, and like you know, there's a lot of those stories. I mean, you know, I thought like maybe March, you know, East Denver time. I remember going out there and talking to people, and it was like a little unclear what Purple's role is and what it should be. And hey, we're not really the money anymore because like our one ETH now is laughable compared to, to <laughs> all the other stuff that's happening, you know. And uh, but and then I went on my own personal side quest, you know, I was like get, getting super involved in optimism and. Uh, and and the super chain and then i went really deep in nouns and i think it's like time to come back home to purple because um i think the ecosystem has shrunk a little bit uh certainly has not grown you know uh it's not it's not a total failure like these previous tweets you read um <laughs> yeah. but it's just an interesting time yeah, where yeah. it feels like a community again uh you know like in the in peak frames it was like people were flooding in and i didn't know who they were 
and uh, and and mostly that's a good thing by the way i'm not complaining about that i thought that was a great thing but now it's back down to like the core believers you know and then even when i think about myself and like where can i have the biggest impact across ethereum you know i do think you know it was purple and decentralized social and i believe in decentralized social like to my core and and that's that's actually my first principle my second principle is like okay farcaster and warpcast is the best implementation of that you know but i'm not here for ban or for warpcast i'm here for a decentralized social and this is the best place for it um then from there it was like the super chain stuff is you know then purple then it seemed like warpcast was and farcaster was like okay cool other people got this uh yeah. you know there's like so much other stuff happening this is great this is what we always wanted uh, and then, so for me, it felt like, oh, maybe my impact can be in the super chain. Maybe my impact can be through nouns. Uh, but, you know, as I've been sort of going through my maybe end of the year exercise of where it can have the biggest impact, I think once again, it's back in decentralized social and nouns is nouns and it's going to be okay uh, or not. But, but, but my impact is, is not going to change the, the tra trajectory of nouns. The super chain is off to the races. Uh, that is a that is going to be a smashing success. Um, and then it's back to like, okay, cool. We all need to rally around Farcaster again. I mean, you know, I'm preaching to the choir here because you guys show up every day and rally. Yeah. Uh, but it's like, it's time to rally around decentralized social and Farcaster again. It's time to help change the narrative. And, uh, you know, we have 40 ETH sitting in the treasury that has not been well deployed this year. Uh, and so, like, let's use I've that. I've had some ETH. thoughts on that. I've had some thoughts on that. I've, I had an idea for a prop that I think I'm going to put in soon. Let's so. do it. We need we yeah. need more props on chain. I have to do some uh, fun things. Yeah. So I feel like, uh, you know, my mission for the next couple of months or longer is going to be to just return to purple, make it exciting, make sure we get good props up. We did fall into retroactive funding as our bread and butter. Uh, yeah. We ran out of uh, money for that was allocated for retroactive funding that was funded through props. So we need another retroactive funding prop. I think that's great. A two month cycle still feels really good. But what we and then the other thing we do is we fund events. Uh, and meetups and, and those are high impact and you know now Ted's doing really incredible work around that stuff too and, and the community you know people don't even see the need funding and people are just rallying so so that's another thing uh, but I think it's time to have more ambitious props for purple again I'm personally very interested in storytelling um, Al I would All love right, to links. see I can't Ooh. I can't wait that's yeah, links wait by the prop. way links great I can't <laughs> wait for your prop yeah. uh, I'm interested in storytelling and not in like the kind of like storytelling is cool and it's like the buzzword now, but it, it does feel like we need to, and all of Ethereum tells the stories outside of our own bubble. Uh, so I'm interested, I'm more interested in telling stories about Farcaster to just creators who are not on Ethereum yet, more so than like trying to fight crypto Twitter, which it's like, whatever, those people already made their decision. And um, Sigwider, yes, go outbid me. It is perfectly fine. You can outbid me. Yeah, I say bring the bidding wars back. Yep. Let's bring the bidding wars back. I already have five or four, four or five. I have like, I think I have three of the old and or four of the old and one of the new or something like that. So I'm good. I'll pick up another one. You grab it for me. Definitely out. Okay. Me. Trivia, trivia for the chat. Who has the most purple tokens? Ever? Oh. I mean, I yeah, could guess. who holds the most purple token? I could guess. And I mean, you can, and the yeah. chat can answer. And yeah, you can find that answer if you go to the purple to purple's uh, yeah. site. They might um, be in the chat. Is it still purple dot construction? They are. Yeah, I think they're in the chat. I think they're in the chat. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah, I think correct. it is still purple dot construction. I think we have some work to do around around that and having a website. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, actually, the in the nouns builder website works perfectly fine so yeah totally um also a good place to go but yes yes to purple yes to crypto maybe we'll loves, get a two loves a leader one. has never seen a leaderboard he didn't want to conquer um <laughs> which i i love about you so much um yes to crypto so it's that's so amazing um, i like have the, a i have a bunch of tokens early on and um and I should start buying them again. I think like as the founder, it ruffled some people's feathers that every time I bought a token, I would hear about it. Um, I started giving them away to like, I think people who are just exceptional, you know? So I actually have very few tokens left. Uh, so, and, and, and the space that we have so many more tokens outstanding now, you know, um, yeah. 655 total tokens, 459 users. If I go and buy the next 10, that's not going to sway yeah. any vote or anything, nope. you know? Well, that's really a healthy DAO too. That's a sign for those who don't know 
Um, that's a sign of a healthy DAO to have that kind of distribution where it's not being held with just two or three people. And like, you know, almost they can control every vote. You have a nice distribution where you've got a lot of people with ones and twos. And that to me is such a good healthy sign. So that's fantastic. Um, what, I would, what I would love to do, but like maybe even on your show in the future is, um, you know, I'm curious of what people think maybe Farcaster's biggest weaknesses are now and what are the various solutions you know and and that i know you know i'm in there i'm building it we can talk about scout game even though i'm really here we're talking about purple um i love it i'm like a maxi i've been here for a long time and so i think maybe i even have like a little bit of a blind spot into like well what are the biggest problems and you know and certainly i talk to people so i understand the users have a hard time getting exposure and, and those kinds of things um yeah, I would love. Uh, yeah, just I don't really. To me, the biggest problem is like we're not growing. Um, I, I think yeah. that's a problem for all of Ethereum, by the way, not just a yep. not just a, a Warpcast thing. Our existential crisis is that we are a small community, and we need to onboard people across all of the touch points of of crypto. Warpcast is a great touch point to onboard people onto. Uh, so that probably would be my focus, but. Um, yeah, I feel like I have a blind spot for for some of the other stuff. Also, having a big account Good like point. I think the three of us have, you have have different blind spots because engagement. Oh, one hundred percent. There are times there are things that I don't even see and have to be. You know, even that's why I love the trending feed. Be don't take it away from me um, because I miss things like you just you just don't see and, and it can be something that's really active and really happening and everybody's talking about it and you're like I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I've completely yeah. missed and this. We don't, and I have to go back and like figure it out. So, yeah. And we don't know what it's things. like to join now. Like we, it's like, right. you you don't know what, it, I know what it felt like to join two years ago. And yep. when, you know, when community was tiny and you just don't know. And I think Chris, good, yeah. good call out on the blind spots. Yeah. I, I will say that. Like constantly reminding yourself, you, it's easy to forget. A hundred percent. I will say that I've have, I've signed up recently with test accounts for, for the app I'm building and the onboarding experience is fantastic, but that, like it is the first class app that team crushes, you know, it's very easy to use. Anyone can sign up. Then when you land, that that's right. where you know that's where my blind spot begins. You know, the the, the text is so small though. <laughs> the text when is you, too small. Once you log in, <laughs> the text it's is too small. I hate this app. I can onboard easily, but the text is just too small. It's just too small. Oh, that's so funny. Um, you'll have to go back a couple days, folks, uh, to understand the uh, context on that one. Um, but that's a really good point, and I'm hoping that what we're doing with Farcaster 101 helps a little bit fill that space, but more needs, more could be in there for sure. And I think things like we used to have like far quest and things like that. I think gamifying some things is helpful as well. Um, and maybe that's something purple could do also, or, or fund if somebody really cool. has an idea around that, but maybe a focus on, um, onboarding or other words like that, <laughs> you know, like yeah, a focus totally. on helping, helping newbies to, uh, yeah, get, yeah, even like an initiative about your first month on Barca. You know, like I don't yeah. know how long it takes. Probably if you have two good weeks, you're probably hooked, you know. Um, you know, one of the hooking points, I think, for a lot of people is making some money. Uh, that's probably not what it should be about. But I've talked to so many people. Um, I've talked to many artists who have participated in like nouns animators or nouns draws. And, and in fact, they didn't know anything about Ethereum. But a friend was just like, you know, you're a great illustrator. There's this way to make money. And, and, and by the way, a lot of my conversations are like people in Argentina or Venezuela where um, getting a little bit of crypto is a lot of money. And so they give it a try. And like within their first week, they earn, you know, it used to be ETH, now it's noun, but they earn some real money. And within the first month, they realize like I make more money here than I make with my full-time job. And I hate my full-time job. So, so you know, then they're just lifetime hooked. Uh, so money helps for sure. Uh, but there's a lot of great stuff. I mean, I love the stuff. I love Fark. Like just watching the intro to your show or, or the section before I join, it's like, man, I love this place. It's like so much fun. The culture is really good. Um, you know, we call out people when they do things wrong. We um, we celebrate stupid memes. Uh, you know, it's yes. like, but it's unique, unique memes, right? Like unique, unique intellectual memes. memes to us. Uh, yeah, it's just such a great place, and and uh, I think it's a. A place that allowed, you know, it used to be like, ah, I joined and you guys are all talking about crypto. I don't know what this is. And, and like, it doesn't have to be that anymore. And, and I think it's yeah. a lot less than it used to be. Um, I think we have a lot more variety. Um, but I, I think to yes to crypto's point here. Um, oops. 
Um, I've onboarded a dozen and only two are still here. Hard for non-crypto people and no way for them to easily find into finding con ease, ease them into finding yeah, content. So we do have to get better with that. Um, so it's like El Dorado, best city ever, but impossible to find. Um, the team no, that is fair. That's fair. Yeah. I think that's but, another blind spot. I actually think yeah. it's, I, I think you kind of still need to somehow know crypto. And I go back, if you remember, I onboarded yeah. a friend six months ago and it was. It wasn't even crypto. She was like, her immediate thing was like, "What's yoink?" Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like it might not even be crypto, but it's like there's still such like random yeah. niche, obscure. Uh, so yeah, you find you're right. All of it. Non. We, but it's like what yeah. it, it's. We were we were just talking about a glossary would be helpful. Um, yeah. It, so that was something that came out of. Um, you know, that's another thing. Like, there's just things that you, people aren't going to know, understand. And we need to you know, a little one of the things that I've been thinking for purple proper is um, we've literally never done this. I've also like, um, you know, I've gone through my own personal journey in two years from being like a truly decentralized maxi uh, where like I want no staff for purple. No, like we're just the decentralized thing. But then you start working with optimism and you're like, OK, this is like way more centralized and way more competent than everything else in the ecosystem. And they have like a comms manager. And when you participate in the OP ecosystem and you wake up that morning, you know what's expected of you. Like, you know, compare that to like nouns where it's like, you know, it's, it's like insanity. the world's craziest yeah. marching band. Yeah. The, um, for purple proper, like I just want to start onboarding people. Like if you buy a token, yeah. like I haven't really figured out the logistics or the time zones. But it's like imagine it's like every Thursday drop into a tavern with me, or every Thursday as a, a, a Google yeah. Meet or Zoom, like something even more personal, and like let's onboard the new members. And then you know I, I wonder if there's something similar we could do for forecaster at large. You know, it's like yeah. It's a great idea. And it doesn't even need to be you. That could be a prop for someone to host kind of 100%, weekly totally. reporting. Yeah. My memory when I joined two years ago and I had seen purple on the timeline and I had not been Dow pilled and I still don't know if I am prof. I don't know if you'd call it, but I've been working hard. <laughs> She's in a Dow um, and that's enough. She's in one and that's plenty. <laughs> but, yeah. But the, the things I remember from two years ago, I'd say one is I knew that purple had nothing to do with Merkel. Like it was permissionless and kind of, and that the, the mission was of purple to proliferate Farcaster. So I just remember feeling like, oh, I like early on, like I want Farcaster to succeed. What can I do? And it felt like, oh, joining right. purple was just like the easiest, lowest hanging fruit thing that I as an individual could do because I also cared about Farcaster. So anyone listening, I just, I, I think over time you kind of forget about purple. I think it also as the network grew, purple as a percentage of who's out there gets smaller and it kind of gets watered down and forgotten. So if you're listening and you care about purple, like go buy a token, go bid on a token, get involved. Cause if it's it's just like it's an easy way, I think, to if if you care about Farcaster. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll also say like um DAOs are very early, but what feels like a natural life cycle of DAOs is that there's constant turnover. And, um, and what, like I'll use, I mean, this is totally, I'll use nouns as the example, but, but this is exactly happening to purple, which is like, you know, you start in the community, you're working on things. And then a lot of those early people have success. And in nouns DAO, it's like, I mean, Jesse Pollock is a member of nouns DAO. He now runs base and Coinbase wallet. He he's like, a member of purple too, isn't he? He is also a member of purple. That's I true. Think he is. Uh, you know, Jacob is a, is a member of nouns. Like these people get very busy because, um, yeah. Now it's like full of it. Purple is full of it too. It's like all of our early members. Like again, like I'll, I'll mention yep. Colin from, from Ponder and uh, you know DF and and like everyone kind of gets sucked out of the DAO back into like their thing, which is which is great. And then new people come in, and uh, when you have success, you like just keep rolling that energy through. Uh, but I would love to kind of you know as I sort of my stated my intentions to turn my focus back to purple I would love to like love bring it. in a bunch of the sort of OGs back and because um as uncomfortable as it makes me uh one fantastic thing for new users is when they DM me and I respond and then they feel seen and someone who's been around for a really long time and has a large following is interested in talking to them and that I just am open you know like I don't know why you you know, everyone knew that back in the day. And now I think when you join, you might know who I am. And you might know that I'm going to respond to your DMs. Uh, but I think Purple can be that, right? Like, like um, 
just come talk to the OGs. Like, like we you see the little, projects you're a working on. little welcome on. wagon. Yeah. Yeah. Or even like just like, a, Hey, wagon. tell us what you're working yeah. on. You know, like, yeah. like we see what you're working on. We'll try your stuff, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, we do have to wrap because Adrian does have to, uh, she has a hard stop today. Um, I do want to share one last thing because it's funny, but Adrian, if you have to go, it's fine. Um, I'll, I'll hang this for one from, last thing. This from Naomi was absolutely hilarious. Um, here is my sketch that I created whilst waiting for my husband to finish a meeting. Farcaster in real life, and hopefully I can get this to play. Um, let me make sure the sound is on. Whoops. Whoops. GM, have a Let me go back. Day. Hold on. Thank you, so you much. have been tapping podcast in real life. GM, have a great day, guys. GM, have a great day. Thank you so much. You have been tipped. You have been tipped 100D, Jen. Any balance 100D. Hi. Thanks so much. No problem. Get some ham. <laughs> Just been tipped 100 ham. It will be deposited. Swipe, swipe. Have a great day. Having a great day. I need my bot hat. Having a great day is essential for your life. Silence, but under the fold you go. Ah! Swipe, swipe. I am being boosted. Oh my god, I can't believe I am being boosted. Swipe, swipe. Ooh, I'm super anon. <laughs> We're so lucky to have her. So so lucky. Lucky. Bravo, Naomi. Afro Chicks, if you're not following Afro Chicks, like, what are you doing with your life? Um, but she's a great example of somebody who was new, dove in, shares her experience, and then just gets funny. So thank you. We love you. Um, and with that, we do have to end and call it there. Again, happy birthday, Purple. We're so glad that we got to spend this um, with Chris Carella. And uh, we will see you all in the timeline. Please go out, bid me on the Purple Token for today. And we'll be back on Monday, 8.30 a.m. We'll see you then. And we'll, talk, we'll be always talking about purple, not just today, but every day. So <laughs> bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>